well, let's start with my absolute favorite hack for the ACT, which is how do we get subject verb questions right without actually even needing to read the sentence. So I'll show you with number six here. So this is a subject verb question. I can look at the answer choices and see which one is different than the others. Is is going to be singular. You can say he is. Happen is plural, like they happen, they were, and they are. Whichever one is different, here one singular, three plural, that's going to be your answer. Now, take read of the sentence on your own. You can pause the video and see if you would have picked is. I wouldn't be surprised if you would have gotten this one wrong. The reason it's the subject is it's the skin. It's not the mantas. The skin is, but a lot of people mess this one up. So just remember this little one of these things is not like the other hack, and you get these questions right every single time on test day. The ACT almost always includes one who versus whom question on the test. You can get this right every single time using this simple trick. Look at the next word. Who is always followed by a verb, and whom is always followed by a noun. So if we look at the next words here, it's had served, which is a verb, which means it has to be who. The correct answer is going to be D. On the ACT, a semicolon is the exact same thing as a period. So a semicolon used correctly when it is linking two complete independent sentences. Now, what that means is if we ever see something like here in 64, where we see two answer choices like G and H that have the same words and one is a period and one is a semicolon, well, a semicolon is the same as a period, which means both of those answer choices are wrong. This happens almost every single test when you see this cross both of them off. We now know it has to be F or J. We can read the sentence. Although no one knows what this artist looks like, there are many who know his work. Here, we need a comma, and the correct answer is F. Shorter and simpler is almost always better on the ACT. When in doubt, go with the shortest answer choice. So see question like 23, we see three long answer choices, B, C, and D, and A is short. Correct answer here is going to be A. The reason why is this sentence says, there are generally several records of royals giving land to deserving scops. So it already says that they're deserving, so saying they proved worthy, or they felt they had earned it, or when they proved worthy, that's all redundant saying the exact same thing. So again, almost always the shortest, simplest answer is correct in the ACT. The most common type of commas you're going to see in the ACT are what's called necessary information commas. It's where it's separate information we can remove from the sentence. So if you see a question like 12 here, where we have all the same words and lots of commas, I want you to use the crossing out trick. What that means is information that is unnecessary, we have to be able to cross out from the sentence. So if we look at how this is written right now, they're controlled wirelessly by a company in Germany and monitored in Rukjan and on the mountain uh, via webcam. So the two commas here and here make it look like I can cross this off. So read the sentence and see, can I cross that off? If I say they're controlled wirelessly by a company in Germany in Rukjan and, well, that doesn't make sense. What about G? Well, if we see commas here and here, looks like I can cross this off. But if I say, they're controlled wirelessly by a company in Germany and and that makes no sense in H the two commas look like we can cross off the and so if I read about the and they're controlled wirelessly by a company in Germany and monitored in Russian on the mountain via webcam well it doesn't quite make sense so here the correct answer is J we can just keep all information there's nothing we can cross off so use that crossing out trick on test day I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I'll be putting up lots more ACT content. Now, if you're really ready to boost your ACT English score, getting some tips and tricks is great, but you have to really learn the grammar rules and the patterns of the test, all of which I will teach you in our ultimate ACT course. There's a free trial uh, in the comments below. So go ahead and click on the link and get started. It has lots of grammar rules there, so you can really start your journey to getting your best ACT score ever. Other than that, I'm Matt at Prep Pros. I'll see you guys next time.